Now we will move on to the second presentation in this afternoon session. The speaker is Professor Nam Ju Han at KAIS. The title of his presentation is Present and Future of Music AI. Good afternoon. I'm working at KAIS. I'm teaching music and audio at KAIS, and I'm also researching areas related to music. Today in this session, I'd like to talk about music, specifically music AI. I'm going to talk about how advanced music AI is and what the pending issues regarding copyright of AI music. The core technology of AI is deep learning, as you know. It's been about 10 years since deep learning first was introduced to the world. Different researchers have different perspectives in the birth of deep learning. Here, the most important technology is ImageNet. In 20, 2017, there was a competition regarding image. The winner of the competition had a 10% better result compared to the, the other entrants of the competition. And this model has three key characteristics. One is data sets of more than 1 million. It is more than 1 million data sets. And the other is a CNN model, which was created back in the 1990s. It combined the, a larger set of data with an existing model. Because that shocked the world. Because they learned that the existing algorithm helped them understand the virtual world. And deep learning has been advanced significantly. Let's take a look at Image Lab. Image Lab already showed that AI has a higher level of perception compared to human. And the autonomous industry is using a computer vision. They can recognize and detect different images at the same time. And in the video and audio field, X-ray can read better than human doctors. In the area of voice and audio, we already have AI speakers and, uh, and a device that can combine human voice and AI voice and you don't have to type a letter. All you have to do is to speak into the device. And when you travel abroad, all you have to do is to place your phone to a sign and the letters are recognized by the device and it is they are translated into your own language. So you, do, you can understand the menu even if it is written in a foreign language. You know AlphaGo as well. And you also know the famous match between the Go player Isedo and AlphaGo. Actually, that match was held here in Fort Season Hotel. And now AlphaGo has a new name, AlphaGo Bold. In discovery of a protein structure, AlphaGo is also used. Earlier this year, a venture capital, a venture capitalist in Silicon Valley called Stefa launched generative AI. Most of the AI technologies were analytic AIs, but now we are seeing a new type of AI, which is generative AI. This was possible because
we have a big model that can process images and sounds. DCPT3 is the most well-known language model. It was created by API, and it can be used for chatbots and creative writing. And in the field of image, as you can see, DALI 2 and stable diffusion and mid journey, they can all need text only to generate images. I don't have to talk more about the audio field because the AI in that field can create and generate voice that is perfectly similar to that of humans. And we are also having AI voice actors. So these examples show the productivity of AI has increased. And video generation is another example. AI is now generating videos. One good example is Meta. In literature, games, and the scientific field, AI will be in wider use. The generative AI was possible thanks to Killer app. I think you have already seen this. I think it was Colorado in the States. This is the winner of the Colorado State Fair. The name of this painting is Opera of Space. And this was created by Image Generation. All the author had to do is to provide text, and the judges couldn't tell whether this was made by AI or by humans. And this case is very symbolic because if we have good eyes, even if you don't have good skills in art, you can create a masterpiece looking like this. And Sequire, when it released this article, there was a very interesting part. It's difficult to read the letters. And there are two authors. And there is GPT-3, which can generate text. The whole story, the whole writing was not made by AI, but use cases. For example, were inspired by gener generative AI. And illustrations and images you are seeing on the screen, they are also created by Mid Journey. So this is a process of co-creation. The authors of the article said it was a very interesting experience. Next, let's talk about music. To write music, we can use AI. There has been activity in this field. Google, Sony, and OpenAI are the leading companies that are actively researching AI in the field of music AI. As a tool, creative tool, AI has been used in the field of music. So we have to take a look at the process of writing music. So when you write music, you create a music track, and then it is recorded, and that's not the end of a write, the process of writing music. And you mix different instruments, and you also go through 
a process called mastering. This is a process to make your music sound better. And finally, your music is refined before being introduced as a final product. So at each step, different technology is involved and they, the technology has been advanced. Generative music history is very long. You know Mozart, the great composer, I think he had a pain, unimaginable pain when he wrote music. And he must have played a game of dice. There are pieces of music and the pieces are numbered and you cast dice twice and the combination of the numbers after throwing the dice, you can have 12 different combinations. In other words, you have 20, 12, 12 different variables. So depending on the number or the combination of numbers, the composer chose different sets of rhythm. And this was even made possible in the era of Baroque. And then we had computers. We were able to use computers to write music. It's one of the music written by computer is Iliard. And some of the first musicians and composers introduced this type of music. And this music was written by a quartet instruments. And this person is Markov. And then with the birth of a computer, we always had AI. In the 1980s, we had this experiment in music intelligence. And Davy Koff is the leading figures who introduced EMI. This is about copying different styles. For example, he copied music of Mozart, Chopin, and he linked and combined different pieces of different composers. And he did not use a learning model. He only used knowledge of music and AI technology based on rules. So all the pieces were attached and linked. So even if the composer didn't write the song, but if you listen to the song, you will see that it sounds similar to a song of a great composer. Let me play this, for example, for your information. So guess whose song is this? It sounds similar, but at the same time, it sounds different. Can you guess who is the composer? The Chopin. The title of the song is Not Tan. Sony had the most advanced technology and David was a composer and based on his experience and knowledge, he used this pattern and rules, but the system didn't, wasn't widespread. And since then, many people tried hard to use AI to write a song. The latest technology trend is not to generate music based on rules. Instead, when you are trying to train AI with data sets, 
So we are moving from text-based creation to using musical notes model. So you know a transformer. It is trained by deep learning. Transformer is a effective model that can be trained with long sequences. It can be applied to music AI. A music transformer launched by Google is one of the most advanced types. And this data is just trained by Medify, not a music score. And there is a main theme melody, and it can be edited in. So here, self-similarity was used. So after training, a random value is given and a similar song to learn the data can be created. And this is the best, one of the best results. I think we, it is sound quite good. The last part was a little bit weird, but to me personally, it sounded similar to a song of Schumann. But this is one of the best results. But it's not that it works all the time. Let's talk about Open AI and MuseNet. MuseNet is using larger or more extensive set of sets of data. And it includes different pop music genres. And it also includes different music scores. What is interesting here is that it is not a random generation. You have to give some conditions. If you visit the website of MuseNet, you can choose a theme melody, and you can also choose how you're going to create the melody by using a composer's pattern. This is Beethoven's from melody, and the later part was created and generated by Chopin's stock. This is similar to a song of Beethoven. You can see that it sounds like a song of chopping. AmuseNet, the Open AI, held a concert. So for quite long, it played songs that sound like Beatles and different artists. Personally, this is one of the most fascinating technologies. This is Open AI, Jukebox. This is not using a notes in a music score. By using this a open AI, you can take advantage of other types of musical 
components. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to share with you some of the results of using OpenAI Jukebox. You know, Frank Sinatra, the famous jazz singer in the States, a classic pop was generated in the style of Frank Sinatra and lyrics were also generated and the lyrics were added to this melody. Let's listen to the result. So, how do you like it? So, this is a result of audio generation. Does it scare you? It's creepy. Is it creepy? You can hear the voice of Frank Sinatra and the sound of jazz band, but new lyrics were added to the melody. The, but the audio quality is not quite there. And next, I'd like to talk about auto regressive. This requires chronological or consequential process. So it took quite a long time to generate one minute long melody. It took nine hours. When you try this, actually, you will see that you will have a hard time generating a certain pattern. So creators, some creators put this on test. So, and they said it was difficult to control the direction of the generation. But there is another challenge. Not just Frank Sinatra, but Bruno Mars or Eminem, their voices were used for this open AI jukebox. And you have to have permission from the musicians to generate this type of music. Maybe it, is, it has something to do with Copyright Act in the States. If the voices are not related to commercial gains, the voices can be used. The voices of the famous singers can be used. But if you want to use those voices for commercial gain, the users of the voices will be held accountable. So the, what you're reading at the bottom of the page is about JukeNet, AmuseNet. Let's take a look at an example of Google. This is Magenta. This stresses collaboration between AI and musicians, and it is focusing on using AI as a creative tool. An interesting example is Yard. This is a synthesis pop group. As you can see here, Music VN, Music VAE, and NSYNC were used for this collaboration. And Yard, the music group, released this album called Chain Tripping. For this album, the melodies used in the previous album were used, and they used the middle melody, and this music VAE made it possible. So music VAE made it possible to create new melodies. So different uh, sets of music source came from different different songs. So this album doesn't violate copyright act. 
and the lyrics came from DPT2, and melody came from different songs. And this is a token of appreciation for music AI. And this album was nominated for even Grammy. This shows a good example of collaboration between AI and creator. And there is something called AI Song Contest. The contest invited musicians and researchers and developers. So they created a team and used different learning models. And the AI Song Contest started in 2020 when we were hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. So the contest was held virtually. And this is a review of the contest. As you can see here, there are different generative models. The melody came from RLNL or CNN. And harmony or baseline, they came from a different models. And the last part, the audio used a voice combination. So you can see a whole set of collaboration. 13 teams entered the contest. As you can see, each team has its own number. And each team showed whether their harmony came from humans or from AI. They also showed whether the melodies or the lyrics were generated by humans or AI. So there were different cases. And the comparison was made. As you can see, lyrics, melody, melody and harmony came from AI. And difficult part, like a structural part, like arrangements and structure and vocal synthesis, they required final touch of human beings. This is a recent trend. This is called Harmony AI. You know the famous stable diffusion? The stability AI is it trying to build a community for audio AI where people can get together to create audio AI. In this model, music, which is not protected by copyright, can be used. Let me share with you another perspective. The way we write a song recently is it's not the traditional process of writing a song. From the start, you use AI technology. There are sample assets. There are pieces of sounds. Splite is the leading website. If you visit there, you will see many creators posted their sample packs. You can buy them and anyone can use them for commercial gain. And it is interesting that famous K-pop music is using the sample packs available in this website. They just modify or edit the sample packs. Let me play a little bit. This is original music that comes from a sample pack. That was the original music, and this was the modified version used for this K-pop song. This is another K-pop song. They used the original music you just heard. So there are many different examples, and this is not violating Copyright Act because they are available for everyone's use. And AI can also separate music tracks. AI can separate drum, bass, and vocal from a music track. And this technology has advanced so rapidly. 
So we, we can even separate them into what we call a spec. And this was created by a Korean developer. And here the song is Dynamite by BTS. Let me play it a little bit. Ding dong, call me on my phone. Nice tea, and I'll get my ping pong. And the sound quality is just so clean. So creators now have a tremendous potential. Historically, we have these great songs, and these songs can be separated into drum, bass, and vocal, and they will be available to creators, you know, violinists and opera singer, they can pick and choose a certain music track from existing or traditional songs, but they can create another copyright issue. There is a certain provisions that can be applied to mixed music, but we have to make sure whether the music came from an original song or was created in the first place. There are many different components in music. There is a tone and there is another component and tone transfer and separate tone of a voice. If you sing a song, you can, uh, your performance style remains the same, but you can add violin rhythm. And you can also add a vocal And the vocal can be transferred into sound of a violin. But the, as you just heard, the same play style can be maintained. And this is the winner of the contest. It's from Thailand. And this is a very famous instrument in Thailand. There are different musical notes that are only used for this type of traditional instrument in Thailand. And the tone can be transferred or converted into sound of trumpet or saxophone. As you, these examples show, you can separate the tone from sounds. Another example is what you are seeing on the screen. You already know vocal AI. You know the AI voice that can copy a voice of someone. And this case shows AI can copy a voice of someone who is dead. But this also uh, is related to Copyright Act. And there is criticism that this AI technology is taking advantage of a dead man's heritage uh, asset. But we this technology can be developed further to separate tone from a voice. And lastly, we can create this commercial music. The one of the latest technologies is what we can use for mixing. Mixing, some people say, is a type of art. You can add a compressor or a collide to make the music sound the best. And the reference uh, data can be input to create the best type of music. 
I'm not going to play this. And here, Mega Mix was used, and the same style can be maintained, and EQ can be controlled to have the best results. I think I'm running late. So this is a summary. The generative AI will be the mainstream. Sequire shows that well. Almost every month, something new is launched. So I have a hard time keeping up with them. So here we have to think about productivity of creators. So creators will spend most of their time in some part and save time in other parts. And this a generative AI will inspire creators. But basically, AI requires learning data. So you have to think about how you're going to protect copyrighted work of artists. But you also have to think about the balance between copyright protection and creativity. And voice data in the field of audio will be a very critical issue. And there are risks of new copyright issues. Are we going to use a watermark? Or are we going to use a new technology when we try to manage music sources? And there could be other copyright issues regarding separated of music tracks. And are we going to give a status to AI? Is AI a creator? Is AI a copyright holder? If we recognize AI as a copyright holder, what would happen? And could this involve plagiarism? AI is a virtual object. Can we ask AI to take a certain responsibility when there is an issue of plagiarism or copyright issues? With that, I'd like to conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. As the presenter said, it is very attractive to use AI, but we also have to 